Hello everybody, the Lawn Gnome is here. Wasn't my idea. talk about one of my most anticipated movies of the summer. Forget the Avengers Age of Ultron, it was all about Marvel's Ant-Man for me this summer. And of course this movie stars Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, Evangeline Lilly, and Corey Stahl. Once again, we go back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's not so grand as we had seen earlier this summer with The Avengers Age of Ultron. This is actually a completely different story, and that's one of the main reasons why I really was excited to see this film. Once again, we take a look at a character that is not a Captain America and not an Iron Man. I was curious to see how he would actually fit in the Marvel Universe. And my god, Ant-Man, everybody, he fits in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This was a fun movie. It is not the best in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but unfortunately we haven't really been getting such great Marvel movies in Phase 2, minus Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain America the Winter Soldier. But this one was vastly entertaining. Paul Rudd was great as a superhero. He was believable. Don't even get me started on how great his comedic timing was. Michael Douglas as the legendary Hank Pym, of course the original Ant-Man, also did a fantastic job, but then again, no matter what kind of a movie he is in, Michael Douglas always gives us a fantastic performance. Corey Stoll, who plays the villain, also known as Yellow Jacket, I didn't really think he was one of the stronger villains, but I did enjoy his character. I definitely think that he, compared to some of the even worse villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, was not as bad. And probably one of the biggest surprises for me was Michael Pena as Scott Lang's friend. He was so freaking funny. And Evangeline Lilly, who I originally was introduced to as Toriel in The Hobbit because I didn't see Lost, she was great as Hope Van Dyne, and I'm very excited to see where her character is going to be in the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe storyline. But it's a very interesting story because this is all about a heist, and it's all about this guy named Scott Lang who, who is released from prison and tries to make his life anew, and he's basically being tempted by his crew to get back into the thieving business, and that is when Hank Pym discovers him and realizes that he could do great things. But Ant-Man was very much like Guardians of the Galaxy. We didn't really know what we were going to expect, and we just had so much fun with it. It was action-packed, it was funny, and of course it's just a great Marvel superhero film. There were parts in the film where the special effects were better than others. I was really surprised with how cheap the CGI on the ants was compared to the opening scene where you actually see a younger Hank Pym and the special effects that are used to make Michael Douglas look that young like he did in Wall Street or even earlier acting jobs in his career. I definitely know that that wasn't makeup because he looked awesome. There were also some excellent tie-ins to the rest of the cinematic universe, and even the fact that Edgar Wright and Joe Cornish wrote the script, but Edgar Wright didn't end up directing this film, it was directed by Peyton Reed, you definitely saw some Edgar Wright style of filmmaking, which is something that I always love to see, because I'm a huge Edgar Wright fan. I definitely think that this is worth seeing, and don't forget to sit after the credits, because you have a middle of the credits scene, and you also have an end of credits scene, which I know you are going to like, and also get ready for a couple of more surprises in this movie, because there definitely are some great surprises. So Ant-Man was fun and entertaining, but far from the best Marvel film, but it's going to get three out of four from me. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I'm so glad that I finally went to see Ant-Man. Please put your comments in the box below, and we can have a discussion, and I'll see you in the next one. Action, speak louder than words.